These days, women everywhere seem to be complaining about how hard it is to find a good man. And author Amanda Chattel, writing at Bull.com, seems to think she knows why. It's not that women are too picky, or that radical feminism has completely destroyed any incentive that men have to commit to women. No, society at large is at fault for why every woman can't find what she considers to be a good man. So it is men who better buck up and get their act together. Or so she seems to think. Let's take a look at the nine reasons that Miss Chattel seems to think it's so hard to find a good man. If we get straight to the point and skip the BS that's only used to soften the blow of painful facts, we can admit it's hard to find a good man. Even if we take our standards, expectations, and delusional hopes off the table and really look at the situation for what it is, we can clearly see that we are not to blame for the lack of good men. No, we have society who can take the blame for this one. Now, I'd like to point out that the author here doesn't say it's hard to find a man. She says it's hard to find a good man. What various women mean by good can have some degree of variance, but for the most part, it's safe to assume that when she says it's hard to find a man, she means it's hard to find a man who's over six feet tall, good looking, makes at least six figures, and doesn't place any restrictions on her personal freedom, but also wants to be in a committed relationship with her and answer to her every whim. Does that sound about right? It's funny, because she explicitly admits that women tend to have, quote, standards, expectations, and delusional hopes, end quote. Her words, not mine. And that tells me that in her heart, she understands that the vast majority of women have unrealistic expectations when it comes to men in relationships. But no, she quickly qualifies this by saying that society at large, not women in particular, are to blame for the lack of good men. How is she going to defend this? Unfortunately, our culture has evolved in a way that has made finding a good man tough, and they certainly don't make them like they used to. So why is it so damn hard to find an awesome guy who's going to treat you right and not bail the first time temptation comes his way? Here are nine reasons. She's again correct on this point. Culture certainly has evolved over the past few decades, but the question is, with fewer people getting married and more people reporting dissatisfaction with relationships, what exactly is to blame? And can we point the finger at anyone in particular? Let's look at the nine reasons she gives and find out. Hookup culture has taken over. Although I would never knock hooking up, it has replaced dating and even relationships. Men don't want to be with one woman only if they have an entire buffet at their disposal. Now, this first reason is extremely telling. I would never knock hooking up. In other words, she's a feminist. She's not going to slut shame anyone. If you want to sleep around, that's fine. But you know, it sucks because now men don't want to be with just one woman. But you see, the fact that she's making this complaint only reinforces in my mind that the only kind of man she's interested in is the top 10 percenter. The man who's over six feet tall, good looking, makes at least six figures, etc. Because I'll tell you this, Every man who's looking for a relationship does not have a buffet of women at their disposal. It's only the select few that the majority of women want. Now, for the record, there is absolutely nothing wrong with women having standards for the men they want to date. So lest you think I'm complaining about the fact that women are generally attracted to a certain kind of man, I actually fully support their right to only be interested in the top 10% of alpha males if that's all they're interested in. However, the flip side of that is that just because that's what a woman may want, it doesn't mean that she's entitled to that kind of man being interested in her. And here's where the author completely misses the point about hookup culture and who's responsible for it. Because there has never been a time in history where men haven't been interested in having sex with multiple women. However, when you have a culture where women aren't willing to give it up unless the men commit, then men at large have an incentive to tie the knot with the most desirable woman they can get. If, however, women are suddenly willing to give it up for free, and the only men they're after are the top 10% of men, 
then it's not hard to see that what will happen is the top 10 to 20 percent of men will end up having sex with 80 percent of women but be unwilling to commit to any of them the old saying goes why buy the cow when the milk comes free but notice which gender is it that is really responsible for hookup culture Women could put an end to this rather quickly if they'd all decided that they were going to stop giving up sex without commitment. People have too many options. Well, it's good to have options. It can be bad when there are too many options. At any given moment, a guy can sit down at a dating app and immediately have endless options of women from which to choose. Because of that, it's hard for them to give one woman a shot for more than a hot minute. This is really the same point as the first one. The majority of men do not have too many options. Studies have already borne out that it is far easier for women to get matches on dating apps like Tinder than it is for men. This woman's complaint is that it's hard to get a good man. But again, no one owes you a relationship. If she chose to lower her standards, she'd be able to land a man no problem. Want a 10%er? Well, that's your right. But imagine how ridiculous this would sound in the reverse. Imagine if a male writer wrote an article lamenting how hard it is to find a good woman, but then you looked at his dating profile and it said, I'm only interested in a woman who's 5 foot 5, long blonde hair, huge boobs, great body, you know, doesn't want to have a career, just wants to care for my home and raise my children, will always let me go out with the guys after work, and will never nag me for any reason. You'd laugh, and rightly so. You'd tell him he has impossibly high standards, and that he should probably look in the mirror and realize he's not capable of bagging a woman like that. But the truth is, that's exactly what this woman is doing in the reverse. And every other radical feminist seems to think that this is perfectly acceptable and absolutely nothing wrong with it. Lots of guys are holding out for something better. It's a sad thought, but in a world with so many options, people can become immersed in the idea that something better might be just around the corner. Because that's the case, it's hard to find a man who wants to commit when they're thinking that the next woman they meet could be perfect, whatever perfect is. The irony here is that this is really projection. The top 10% of men, the ones that she wants to date, aren't actually thinking like this. They're thinking about having sex with as many beautiful women as they want, effectively having a harem. It's women who are naturally hypergamous and always looking to trade up as soon as they meet a man who's taller or better looking or makes more money or whatever. Again, women could fix this rather easily if they started refusing to give away sex without commitment. But no, that's an impossible cross to bear. Women deserve to be able to have carefree sex with as many men as they want and then find an amazing husband who meets all their standards whenever they're finally ready to settle down. Never mind that by that time they've wasted their youth and beauty on other men. Marriage is becoming obsolete. Once upon a time, people couldn't wait to get married. Although it was likely due to the fact that they would finally be able to have sex, the reality is that these days people are in no rush to get married. So therefore, they're in no rush to get into a relationship or settle down. And if a guy's friends aren't married, he sure as hell won't be the first one to do it. And she acknowledges that the widespread acceptance of sex outside of marriage has removed one of the major incentives men used to have to get married. But does she at all mention divorce court? Because last I checked, one of the major reasons men aren't willing to get married is because over 70% of divorces are initiated by women. And with no-fault divorce laws and courts that are overwhelmingly biased towards women, Marriage provides absolutely no benefits to men anymore, and in fact, it is a great personal risk to men. See my video series Defending Traditional Marriage to learn more. Some men are intimidated by power. In comparison to the past few decades, women are far more independent than ever. This success and power, for some reason, can be intimidating for some men, who perhaps realize that they'll never be the man his female partner is. First, so what if this is true? Is a woman in this kind of social position entitled to a relationship? No, no one is entitled to a relationship. 
So even if it is the case that men choose not to have relationships who are in a higher social status than they are, that's not society's fault. If you're a woman and you want a high social status and a relationship, you might have to decide which one you want more. You can't demand both. But I'd also like to point out that I think this goes both ways. I agree that men generally don't want to be in a relationship with a woman who makes more money or has a higher education level, because they know that such a woman is less likely to respect them. But it also should be obvious to anyone with some basic observation that it's the women themselves who are reinforcing this. When is the last time you saw a woman with a PhD da dating an auto mechanic? Women don't choose men who are in lo a lower station than they are, and so this point has it completely backwards. Technology has created distance. How can anyone possibly find a good man, or anyone at all, when we live in a world where technology rules and our most intimate relationships are with our iPhones? We can't. And last I checked, women are willingly using apps like Tinder to bid for the top 10% of men by offering them carefree sex. Is this society's problem, or is it your fault as an individual? The man-child is a legitimate problem. A man-child is, is just a modern term for a man who suffers from Peter Pan syndrome. He does not want to grow up. If he grows up, he'd have to become responsible, get his act together, and even maybe find a girl and fall in love. Too many men just don't want to do that. Yeah, and why don't they want to do that? Is it just because men are inherently irresponsible? Or, it be, or is it because there is no longer any mutual benefit to marriage? Popular culture craps all over married fathers on a daily basis. Married men are assumed to be abusive without any evidence, and at the drop of a hat, a woman can send a man to divorce court, take his children, have his stuff, and receive alimony payments for life. Why really do you think men don't want to grow up and get married? Everyone has their baggage. No one is immune to having a rocky past, and sometimes that past can interfere with how that person moves forward, if they move forward at all. Messy baggage can keep even the great guys in hiding for a long time. Yeah, and it's just the guys who have baggage, right? I mean, it couldn't have anything to do with the fact that the woman has a past too. It couldn't have anything to do with the fact that women with more sexual partners are statistically more likely to initiate divorce, and men rightly have concerns about committing to women who haven't stayed chaste before marriage, or clearly don't view marriage as a commitment that comes with responsibilities for them as well as their husbands, right? Being phobic of commitment is accepted. We live in a world where being scared of commitment has simply become the norm. If a man doesn't want to commit, people are rarely surprised. Since that's the case, they'll just keep on skipping out on commitment and sticking to hookup culture, because it's so accepted. And I shouldn't have to repeat myself. The reason men are scared of commitment is because they are the only ones being told they have to have it. Men are expected to remain faithful to their wives, provide, capitulate to their every selfish need. But if a woman wakes up one morning and decides she's sick of her husband, She's a hero for taking him to divorce court and taking everything he has. Gee, I wonder why men are so scared of commitment. To all the women out there pining about why you can't find a good man, whatever that means, there are two reasons. Let me spell them out for you. One, your standards are too high. Granted, you are free to have whatever standards you want. That is your right. But the reality is that no one owes you a relationship, period. If the kind of man you're looking for isn't interested in you, you can either accept that and remain single, or lower your standards until you find a man who is interested. Whining and complaining does not make you entitled to a relationship. 2. By willingly engaging in casual sex and pushing for legislation that gives women all the power in marriage, Men have di are directly incentivized not to get married and instead have no strings attached sex with however many women are willing. Women could fix this at any time if they decided to go going back to insisting that men commit prior to giving up sex and supporting the full privatization of marriage without government interference. 
but somehow I don't think the author of this article has any intention of doing that. And that is my two cents. Take it for what it's worth. Thanks everyone for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, as well as hit the bell to receive notifications so that you never miss an upload. And if you're a fan of my channel, please consider supporting me on Subscribestar, Bitbacker, or Patreon to receive special rewards. All links can be found in the About section of my website, my2centsvideos.com.